and instructs office bearers of the Jamaat or elders in families to listen to such questions or concerns with great deal of patience and to respond in a way that addresses the questions or concerns of the young people. This is the example of Hazur himself. Day after day, Hazur is meeting MDs and answers their questions, whether it is in personal mulakats, whether it is in his virtual mulakats, or through thousands of letters in correspondence. Often, I have seen that Hazur answers a question, and then when he concludes, he asks the individual. He might just be a seven or eight year old, or a, nine, or a 10 or 12 year old. And he asks, did you understand? And only if the child responds affirmatively, then Hazul concludes. Otherwise, Hazul will go back, even though he has so many other engagements, and will continue to explain and elaborate until that child understands and has clarity. One, two, one, two. Even today, before Zohar prayer, is it okay now? Hazul had a virtual mulakat with graduate students from it's Germany, good. and the meeting overran, because towards the end, one of the students asked Hazul, what is meant by integration. How do you integrate into Western society? And Hazur continued giving his answer until the Khadim was very, very clear yeah. about how a person, how a Khadim should okay, live how's in it now? society. One, two, one, two. And just as a matter of interest, Three, Hazur four. explained to him that the way to integrate into society Don't. is not that when your friends say to you that let's go to the nightclub or let's have. Uh, get involved with uh, narcotics or drugs or alcohol, that you accept them or be prone to peer pressure. Rather, integration is to take steps to learn about your country, to learn the language, to obey the laws, and to be loyal to it, and to try your utmost to contribute in a positive fashion. So as MDs, we are extremely fortunate to be blessed with Khilafat and to have a constant spiritual guide and actually a spiritual shield who protects us. Over the years, there has been many contemporary and social issues which Hazur has warned us about. And later, we have seen the wisdom and foresight, even if it was not clear to us at the outset. One very pertinent example is the website and social media site of Facebook, which many, many years ago Hazur advised MDs to avoid, especially for personal use. Now, more than a decade later, there have been many studies, many news reports that have exposed the dangers of Facebook, many of which were impossible to foresee at that time when Hazur first warned about it. In terms of a risk to an individual, the online world, including Facebook, has led to a huge increase in cyberbullying to the extent that young teenagers or adults have become suicidal or suffered from huge mental health issues. Furthermore, social media sites like Facebook have been used and targeted by criminals to lure children or vulnerable children or adults towards exploitation, towards criminality. Then on a wider level, it has been widely reported that Facebook has sold the personal data of millions of people to private companies who then profit from that data and are able to monitor the lives of people without their consent or knowledge. Then, again, just taking this one instruction of Hazur to avoid, look at, and again, looking at Facebook, it has been a source of great disinformation leading to political elections being affected. It has caused disturbances and even riots within countries, the persecution of communities. For example, it is said that Facebook played a big role in the persecution of hundreds of thousands of Muslims, Rohingya Muslims in Burma. In terms of politics, many reports suggest that Facebook and similar websites have fueled nationalism, racism, and led to populist leaders being elected or having an influence on things like Brexit. Now, when Hazu warned the Jamaat and warned the young youth people 15 years ago or 10 or 15 years ago, nobody could have predicted such a range of negative outcomes. Yet this was something inside Hazur, surely guided by Allah the Almighty, that caused for him to give this warning. Those Ahmadis who listened and who obeyed his message 
will have reaped the blessings of that obedience and will have been saved from many harmful outcomes. Those who did not will have been exposed, exposed to those dangers. These days, much is being spoken about artificial intelligence. Things like chat, GPT, are taking mankind in a direction of travel where the de destination of where it's going to end up. Most of us, in fact, everyone is ignorant of. With regards to this topic, Hazur has been asked on several occasions recently, and Hazur has warned that we have to be very, very careful of such technology. Just yesterday, Hazur met a politician, and the politician asked Hazur about artificial intelligence. And Hazur said that it has the potential for some good in the, in the world, in society, but it also has the potential for great harm and destruction. For example, one example Hazur gave was that it has the potential to weaken humanity by making people lazy and stop using their brains, which over time can have a very damaging effect on society. Over centuries, the human brain has developed, which has enabled the world to become more civilized and the development of the world. Yet there is a risk that this such technology could lead to a situation where humanity goes backwards. As we mentioned to the guest yesterday, that these things are all based upon niyat, that is intention. If people had developed such technologies or pursue them with the intention of serving humanity, then all well and good, and it can have a positive impact. But if they are motivated by money, by greed, or a desire for power, then these technologies have the potential to sow the seeds of division which threaten humanity itself. Moreover, there are a lot of social issues that Khudam are facing or exposed to in society these days. There is a very strong liberal agenda. In this, Hazur is constantly guiding us that we must be confident in our faith, not feel any type of conflict, complex, or consider our teachings to be backward. For example, at the moment, there is a lot of discussion about transgender and the transgender, transgender issue in a way that any person who even questions the way society is moving in this regard is at risk of being canceled or exposed to a lot of hatred. Yet sometimes we have to be willing to take criticism or pain for the sake of what is right, what is better for humanity. Hazur has spoken about how schools or the media are creating such an environment that small children are being sexualized or being taught things that they simply do not have the capacity to understand. A few weeks ago on Twitter, I came across a video, there were several videos actually, of almost completely naked transgender people in what I think is uh, known as drag. And the audience were not adults, but young babies who were sitting in the laps of their children, whilst these dancers danced in a very provocative and immoral way. Now, if anyone ponders and reflects honestly upon something like this, they cannot surely ex consider or suggest that such exposure is appropriate. Yet, if we are not strong, if we don't take a stand as Ahmadis and follow the guidance of Khalifa Waqt, then we ourselves and our children will be affected and start considering some, such things as normal. And what kind of impact will that have on our future generations? As press secretary, it is my duty from time to time, or quite often, to inform Hazur of such things. And I've seen the pain in his eyes that humans are not just turning away from religion or God, but are turning away from things that are completely contrary to civilized behavior, from decency and from morals. And those who question this turn of events are considered as extremists. Now, finally, it seems as though some people are starting to realize the error of these ways and the dangers. For example, you might all have heard of, or some of you may have heard of, a recent case in Scotland that received a lot of publicity that a very serious and dangerous male criminal suddenly claimed that he was a woman. And because the Scottish government had placed such an emphasis 
on the right to self-identify. And that dangerous person was about to be allowed into a women's only prison. And upon this, the women themselves started raising their voices that our rights are being compromised and sacrificed in the name of equality. Similarly, there's, in these uh, the sporting events, there are many women now who are complaining that males who suddenly identify as women are taking part in their events, even though they have natural, such natural physical advantages. So these are just some of the societal issues that we are facing and that you as young people are going to be exposed to when you go out into society. The purpose of mentioning them is to remind all of you how fortunate we are that Khalifa Waqt is guiding us. We are the only community in the world who has this blessing. Let me give one more example. For the past 15, 16 years, Hazur has warned about the risk of a world war, about the risk of nuclear weapons being used. He has warned about opposing blocks and alliances being created in the world. When Hazur first mentioned these risks, Back in the mid to late 2000s, the risk of such a war, the risk of nuclear weapons seemed quite far-fetched. I sat in meetings where politicians or leaders' demeanor was such that you could see that they considered what Hazu was saying to be wrong, or they thought that he was exaggerating the risks. Yet ever since, the situation has become more fragile day by day. And in particular, over the last couple of years, we've all seen how global instability has accelerated. Whether it is the Russia-Ukraine war, whether it is what is the risks of China and Taiwan's issue, whether it is what is happening to the Palestinian people, or the continued menace of terrorism, the world is not in a safe place. I sometimes reread speeches Hazul gave at peace symposiums in 2010 or 2011, around that period. And it is incredible to see that how Hazul forewanders of the situation that we are now coming to see to pass exactly word for word as he had warned. And it is very painful to see that the words of warning that Hazul gave were ignored. Another example is Brexit. In 2012, at the European Parliament, even before there was any talk of a Brexit referendum in the UK or any idea of UK leaving, Hazul spoke in the European Parliament. And what did Hazul say? Hazul said that I urge European countries to have more integration, to cooperate with one, each, one another. This is how you will be able to show your strength in the world. Regrettably, the country that Hazul lives in, the United Kingdom, was actually the country that decided to oppose this. And ever since we've left the European Union, now even those who were very much in favor of it are saying that so far it has proved a disaster and nothing good has come from it. The UK's status has been diminished in the world just as Hazur had stated. As MDs, we are not politically motivated, but we have to strive for the betterment of humanity and for that it is our duty to convey to others what the Khalifa of the time is saying and guiding. Just a couple of days ago, there was an event here in Islamabad with guests. And during a conversation with a local politician, he mentioned the Russia and Ukraine war to me. And he asked me what my views were. I told him that based on Hazu's guidance at the peace symposium, I thought that there should be greater efforts to develop peace in Ukraine and some sort of negotiations should take place. Upon this, the guest said to me, that the Russian president is, a, in his words, a madman, and you cannot negotiate with a madman. And he said that the only solution, in his view, was that Russia and Putin should withdraw all their troops from Ukraine. Nothing else would suffice. Upon this, there was another MD at the table, and he mentioned Israel and Palestine. And he said that then surely you agree that Israel has taken the land of innocent Palestinians. They should also then withdraw immediately. Upon this, the guest said that he did not have much knowledge of that, but he knew that the situations were different. What is different? Perhaps that in one case, it is the Western 
leaders or the allies of this country who are perpetrating the cruelties. In another country, it is their opponents. That is the only difference that I can see. And that is the injustice that Hazur often speaks about in geopolitics. That it is one rule for one and another rule for another. Living in the West is very easy to be brainwashed or to be um, moved in a certain direction. Because we are exposed to the Western media, we are exposed to the news here. In this regard, Hazur has told me and advised me on several occasions that we should try to broaden our horizons. Hazur told me a few weeks ago that whenever he has time, he tries to watch Al Jazeera or he tries to watch some of the Japanese or Chinese news channels so that he is able to increase his knowledge and get a different perspective. If Hazur is taking that time to broaden his horizons, then surely we should take the lead from him. And all of us surely have a lot more time in our hands than Hazur does. Moving on, I've spoken about how Hazur guides and protects us. I now, want, in the last few minutes, wish to mention a little bit about Hazur's character that I have seen and how he is a living embodiment of Islam's teachings. With the grace of Allah, I've had the opportunity to travel with Hazur on different occasions over the years. And you get to see that apart from the great impact Hazur's presence has on MDs, how it also, the great impact he has upon the people of different races, religions, or people who have no interest in religion whatsoever. I've seen how people who, like I say, have no interest in religion, feel extremely emotional at having the chance to meet the Khalifa of the time. Last year, as you will probably be aware, Hazu traveled to the United States. As we boarded the flight to America, I recall some guidance that Hazur had given me some years before. During a mulaqat, I had mentioned to Hazur that there had been a plane crash in, a, in, a, in Russia and several people had died. Upon hearing this news, Hazur was, of course, very saddened at the loss of life. And then Hazur mentioned that to me, that people think that modern technology is so advanced, yet it is only with Allah's grace and Allah's mercy that every day we are protected. Otherwise, any time or any moment, we could be at risk. And then speaking about air travel itself, Hazur said, when you, whenever you go on a plane, Hazur said, Sirf ek tarika hai jahaz ki safar ka. Aur wo hai ki jis wakat se tum jahaz par dakhal ho, jab tak khairiyat se land na ho, sirf istighfar paro that from the moment you board a plane, the only method is, is that you offer is istighfar until the moment that you land safely. What beautiful advice and guidance and an illustration of the absolute trust that Hazur has in Allah the Almighty rather than relying on any person or individual or any technology which can never be 100% reliant. Anyway, on that flight to America last year, I remember that there were a couple of flight attendants who, of course, were assigned to check if the passengers were comfortable. Towards the end of the flight, one of the flight attendants came up to me. He said that he and his colleague had approached Hazur several times to ask if he or Hazrat Apajan required anything at all. And each time they thanked him and said that they were fine and didn't need anything. He told me that just a moment before he again, he had asked Hazur that, can I bring you anything? Is there anything I can do to make you more comfortable? And Hazur said that he didn't need anything at all, but he said that I would appreciate it if you checked if my staff were okay. I was very much moved when I heard this, that Hazur sets aside his own needs and desires, but still cares with such detail and intricacy for those around him. Anyway, the flight attendant was very much concerned that perhaps out of shyness, Hazur did not ask for anything. And so he said to me that, can you go and ask His Holiness that does he need anything? Upon this, I said that during the journey, two or three times, 
I myself had approached Hazur and asked if he needed anything, but I too had received the same response. Throughout the journey, Hazur was engaged in prayer, unlike, not like the rest of us who, if you get a chance on a plane, you might watch the TV or, the, or watch a movie or something. Rather, Hazur's time was engaged, in, even in that time, in trying to grow closer to Allah the Almighty. At the end of the conversation, the flight attendant told me, he said that I've been on doing this job for many, many years, and there have been many, many VIPs, politicians, dignitaries who come onto th these planes and who I have to serve. And they're always very demanding. They don't speak to me unless they need something. Like, but he said that His Holiness is completely the opposite. He said he speaks with such kindness, such humility and softness that I desire to serve him. But every time I ask him, he says he, is, he requires nothing. So these, this is just a small incident, but these types of incidents I've witnessed on many occasions that bear witness to the fact that the Khalifa Waq lives up to those ideals which he calls all MDs to live upon to. Where Hazur calls us and asks us to be humble, to be kind, to live simple lives free from extravagance. That is what he is doing himself. Here in the UK, here in Islamabad, we are so fortunate that we have this honor to reside in such close proximity to the Khalifa of the time. I've traveled to different countries and have seen the emotions of MDs who have seen Hazur from a distance for the first time or perhaps had a one or two minute mulaqat. I'll never forget a few years ago, I met an MD who was in his 70s. He had never met a Khalifa in his life until that day. And when he came out of the mulaqat, he had tears streaming down his face. And he said that today I'm ready to die. And I said, what do you mean? And he said that all my life, for decades, I've been praying for this opportunity to meet the Khalifa of the time. I thought this opportunity had passed me by, but today Allah Ta'ala has granted me this chance. He has granted me this opportunity. And this is more than I could ever deserve. And so if Allah wishes to take me, I am ready today. The sacrifices Hazur makes, the Khalifa of the uh, time makes for us are truly incredible and most of us are unaware of them. I remember in Canada several years ago, it was a very long trip, Hazur traveled for six weeks, day and night, there were engagements, morning till evening. In one evening, Hazur mentioned to me that since the night before, he had been feeling extremely unwell. And he said that the previous night he was so unwell that he considered calling a doctor. But he said the reason he did not do so was because he feared that if he called a doctor, then MDs might be concerned, might be worried, might feel some panic. So he preferred to stay in his home in a state of discomfort rather than to cause even a slight degree of concern to the MDs. That is the pure love that he has for the members of the Jamaat. That same day, there was an event with Khudam, uh, Jamia students, and Hazur told me that he had a very severe headache throughout the program to the extent that a few times he thought about stopping, but he kept going because he didn't want to disturb the young Khudam. He told me that as he walked to the mosque for prayer that day, there was a point came where he thought he was going to fall to the ground but he said, and smiling, Hazur said that Allah Ta'ala ne himmat de diya. That Allah, the Almighty, gave me the strength to continue. And none of us, the thousands of MDs who were present, had any idea of the pain. Then, there are many other sacrifices that Hazur makes on a daily basis for the sake of the Jamaat. I once had the opportunity to be in Hazu's office when he played a DVD of some clips from the Jalsa Salana Qadiyan, which had taken place a few days before. And whilst he was working, Hazu would look at the DVD from time to time. He would look at the scenes from Qadiyan. And as he viewed it, I felt and I could see and observe the love he had for the town of the Promised Messiah. Hazu showed me Masjid Aqsa, 
and he showed me with great delight that there had been an extension so that more people could go there to worship. The video continued and it came to Bahisti Makbra and the blessed grave of the promised Messiah. And as I saw Hazur observing that scene, I could not help but be emotional, seeing the love that Khalifa Wak bears in his heart for the promised Messiah alayhi salam. Then, as the scene continued, the video continued, there were scenes of MDs walking the streets of Qadian. Different buildings were shown. And at that point, Hazur said to me, that when I see Qadian, or when one sees Qadian, you forget everything else, and you desire just to go there immediately. And this love that the Khalifa of the uh, time has for Qadian is actually an expression of his love for the promised Messiah, which we must seek to inculcate within our hearts. I think the time is running out, is that correct? Okay. So I'm sorry to uh, go on too much. I will just conclude then with one brief incident or mention about the humility of the Khalifa of the time. Once in Germany, it was Jalsa, Germany, and Hazu's activities were non-stop again. A apart from the formal sessions of the Jalsa Salana, Hazu would have meetings throughout the rest of the day, whether it was mulakats with MDs, or he would meet delegations of guests. And there was one non-Muslim guest. Upon seeing his people coming in and out of Hazu's office and seeing Hazu going to the Jalsa Ga and returning, he said that, I have observed your routine during these Jalsa days and it is non-stop. I want to ask you that your normal days when you are back in your home, what do they look like? Upon this, Hazu said, he smiled actually, and Hazu said that my every day is like a jalsa. Today's day is nothing out of the ordinary. Whether I'm in Germany, whether I'm in London, I take no weekends, I take no holidays. Then another guest, at the same time who was there, he said, I also have a question for you. He said that my question is, is that why were you chosen as the Khalifa? Upon this, with the utmost humility, Hazu said that this is the one question that I do not know the answer to. Hazu said that this is a di dilemma. Now, these were Hazu's exact words. These, this is a dilemma that till this day, I have not been able to solve. Again, I reiterate that Hazu's this comment was a reflection of his humility. At the same time, every member of the Jamaat is witness, every sincere member of the Jamaat, should I say, is witness to the fact that Hazu's personality is one of love, grace, and kindness, and that since the, that day 20 years ago when he was elected as Khalifa al Masih, our Jamaat has gone from strength to strength. The pressures upon the Khalifa of the time are beyond belief. Every moment, people are looking towards him. We look at the way Hazul walks. We look at the way he talks. Every single word we pay attention to. Has anyone ever seen a wrong word come from his mouth? Has anyone ever seen him, his conduct, fall below the standards? With this in mind, it is our duty does it not behove us to be fully obedient to the Khalifa of the time? To remain firmly attached? And so with these words, I pray that may Allah Ta'ala grant Hazur a long life and may we all be firmly obedient and attached to Khalafat-e-Amdiya always.